Hey guys, it's Joe. I just wanted to bring you a video about the rares that are in the Mist of Pandaria beta currently. Blizzard is going back to what really worked well in Burning Crusade and in Wrath of the Lich King, particularly in terms of achievements. I felt like the rares in Cataclysm were very uneventful. There was nothing special about them. They did drop decent gear for the initial launch period, but after that, their gear became very inconsequential, maybe good for an alt or two. Now, these rares still drop gear, blues, and depending on the level of the mob that you kill, the eye level of the gear gets better as well. But when you factor in the achievements to kill all of these, as well as the fact that not only do they drop that gear, but they also drop vanity items, that is going to prolong the life of these rares and the hunting of these rares. Because with the vanity items and of course the achievements, people are going to continue to hunt these things down. Okay, let's first look at the achievements. The first one you'll get for killing one of the rares by themselves, just anyone, is a worthy opponent, which is defeat one of the powerful champions of the Pandaren races that wander the continent. This brings up the next point I want to talk about. The fact is that these rares are not like you've seen in the past where you can tame them. They are not creatures. These are actually humanoids of the Pandaren races. Every one of them, there's a Mogu, there's Hosen, there's a Jinyu, all those different races are represented in these rares. So unfortunately, hunters, you guys are a little bit left out on the cold on this. So let's look at the next achievement after that, which is, could we find more like that? Which is defeat one of each type of Pandaren champion, which means you kill each one of the rares races. Then of course we have the ultimate achievement for these rares, which is glorious, which is killing every single one out there. At this point on this list, you're looking at 49 rares in total across the entire continent of Pandaria. So people are going to have a lot of fun continually trying to get these, as well as PvP servers should be fun fighting over them. Now at this point in the beta, it's only about an hour respawn time, but of course it is beta, so all this is subject to change. With the Jade Force closed, I'm going to cover the Valley of the Four Winds in this video, as well as the stuff they drop, and show you what the vanity items do. As you can see, I have the map marked for all their locations, and we're going to go ahead and start with Suluk Shore, north of the Fruited Fields and just by the Cavern of Endless Echoes. Now, Suluk Shore is a Mogu Sorcerer. Bear in mind, there is also a Warrior. They are delineated differently in the achievement. Each race has the same set of abilities, whether you're fighting this 86 Elite or a 91 Elite. If it's a Mogu Sorcerer, like in this case, you're going to deal with the same abilities each time. Obviously, the damage and everything will be higher as you go up. There you see him casting Void Cloud, which just puts a Void Zone on the ground. Obviously, do not stand in it. I was not aware of that, so it took me a second to get out of it. The other thing he does is a Shadow Bolt, which does hurt, especially in the upper levels, but it can be interrupted, so at least it can be dealt with. The other thing is a Dark Bolt, which doesn't do too much damage, so it's pretty much negligible. With all that being said, let's skip to the end of the fight where we see the items that he drops. Now, this was my first rare kill, so I did get the achievement here for a worthy opponent also. Alright, let's loot this thing and see what he has. Now, a small bag of goods, I'm assuming, is gold and cloth, as we've seen in the past. But here we go, gear-wise, you're looking at male gloves, item level 410, 600 lemon stam, 408 intellect, increases your mastery by 276, increases your critical strike by 265. Moving on to the next item, normally a vanity item, this one actually is very useful. The Crystal of Insanity actually has a use of increases all stats by 500 for one hour. Counts as both a battle and guardian elixir with a 15 minute cooldown. Bear in mind these items are bind on pickup, so the gear has to be appropriate for you to use it. Next up is Selena, I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced, in the Gilded Fan Marsh, just north of Half Hill. Now where I have it marked on my map is where I found it, but apparently it has multiple spawn points within the marsh. I believe two others besides this one, so you might have to do a little hunting around for it. Since we are dealing with a new race, we have a whole new host of abilities we gotta worry about. Selena is a Jinyu. First ability you're seeing here is called Rain Dance. It's a channeled AoE in which he's going to throw these blobs of water all over the place. You can just avoid it like I'm doing, but what I didn't know is that you can actually interrupt it. You can't interrupt it when he's casting it, but once he starts channeling, once it's in the process, you can actually interrupt it. 
next big ability is called Torrent. This is another channeling ability, but it goes directly on you, and it will take 25% of your HP every second, so you have to interrupt it or use cooldowns or you're dead. Third ability is called Water Bolt. While it doesn't do any significant damage, you can interrupt it. Just make sure you have another interrupt ready for Torrent when that comes up. If you know you won't, just save it for Torrent and just soak the Water Bolt. And as before, let's cut to the end so we can see what this guy drops. Alright, let's take a look. We have the small bag of goods and an overgrown lily pad. Now this says grants one druid ability based on class and combat role. So this basically gives you symbiosis. Now notice a druid is the only class that cannot use this, of course. Makes no sense. Now the key is, from what I've heard, can only be used in Pandaria does not mean that you can use it in the dungeons in Pandaria. Unfortunately, from what I am told, you can only use it in the outdoors. Let's hope that this gets changed. It's something that they should reconsider for sure in my opinion. Next up, some leather hands pretty much have the same stats as the male ones, except the mastery is at 284 and the crit strike is 252 this time. Alright, next up we head east, going over to right where you cross over into the Valley of the Four Winds from the Jade Forest for Nasra Spothide. There's a bridge that leads over to the Thunderfoot Acres. She is under a pagoda just before that. Alright, anybody that has played a monk in the beta will be familiar with some of these moves. Right off the bat, she's going to come up here with a spinning crane kick, which cannot be interrupted. It can be stunned or CC'd once it's actually been channeled, but otherwise you'll just have to avoid it like I'm doing here. The other main ability you'll have to be aware of is Healing Mist. That can be interrupted, no problem. Just have to make sure you're watching for the cast. Now, the one ability you will not see here in this particular fight for me is called Chai Burst. That is a burst of energy that will hit you if you're outside of 15 yards. It also hits exceedingly hard, so stay within that 15 yards as arranged. If you have to run to get away from the spinning crane kick, just make sure you get right back into that 15 yard range before she has a chance to shoot it at you. All right, again, let's cut to the end and see what she drops. <laughs> Got an additional add on that one, didn't mean that, but whatever. Uh, Seed of Tranquil Growth. It's a trinket, summons a tranquil sprout, I think that's misspelled, to heal you for 10 minutes. Can only be used outdoors, so apparently no dungeons. Next up are the Grower's Gloves, which are the same leather gloves we just saw, so I wonder if the gear has a shared loot table. I know the trinkets are specific to each boss, but I can't be certain about the gear. Next up is Salyan War Scout. He patrols the river right there east of the Silken Fields. I have his entire patrol marked here on the map, so if you need to hunt him down, that's where to find him. Just to make it clear on the map, it does show him crossing the river. As you can see, he was just doing it when I came by, so he does swim across, so keep an eye out in the river and on either bank. Now, he is a race called a Saurok, and he has several abilities. The main one you need to keep in mind is he has a Vanish. If you hit him as soon as he stealths after the Vanish, you'll be fine. But if you do not, he will come out with something called Smoked Blade, which gets very, very nasty. Usually you can avoid it just like a spinning crane kick or whatever, but as you can see, I took some pretty serious damage from it since I didn't hit him after he stealth. The other ability he does is called a Vicious Rend. It just stacks and does damage over time. Not a ton you can do about that one. Just kill him quicker, I guess. <laughs> and another ability you won't see here is called Grappling Hook because it is used on ranged players that are more than 20 yards away. So obviously you want to stay within that range so you don't have to deal with that situation. Alright, let's skip to the end and see what this guy drops. Alright, and dead, and let's take a look here and see what we got. Let's see. Cloth Gloves, uh, 611 Stam, 408 Intellect, seems to be standard. It increases Crit Strike 206, increases your haste by 310. Eh, not bad. Hope you clothies like that. And let's see, the Salen Battle Banner. Use, blend into the shadows for one second, and summon the Salen War Scout, just like this guy. The War Scout will draw the attention of the nearby monsters and run into the distance. Oh, so he stealths and vanishes, run away. Okay can only be used outdoors in Pandaria, so there's some very specific uh, details there. Alright, we're gonna go and head over to Black Hoof, who
who is just north of the Storm Stout Brewery. Black Huff starts off with rushing charge because I am outside the 20 yard range, so again, if you are a caster or a ranged, stay within that 20 yards. Of course, unless you have to run away from this, which is his stomp. Simple AoE, it does stun you, but you can get away from it pretty readily, as you saw. Unfortunately, there I grabbed Mad. Whoops. Next ability is his Bellowing Rage, which increases his damage but also slows his movement. Now, I just circumvented it by sicking my trees on him. But otherwise, you can just run away, and as he slowly comes towards you, you can wait for it to wear off and then go back to DPSing him. And with that, that is all his abilities. Let's go ahead and cut to the end and see what this guy drops. Alright, got a little help from a shaman on that one. Uh, that was nice of them. Alright, so we got Grower's Gloves again. So apparently bad RNG is coming our way. Shared loot table is the only thing I can think of on those. And the Battle Horn. Blast a blaring horn attracting enemies within 40 yards. So that sounds like a really nice tanking trinket, actually. Well, that's not even a trinket. So you could just use it whenever. Only has a two minute cooldown. Well, that will be very good for tanks. Nice that not only did we get vanity stuff, but we get some stuff that's pretty useful as well. All right, next up, we're gonna go over to John Dar. He's hanging out in the ruins right over there by Nessingwary's Safari. Well, first thing you'll notice is that he appears to be a statue just sitting there. I couldn't even actually charge him, even though I had him targeted. I had to actually go up and hit him. I'm not sure why that was. Anyway, as you can see, John Dar is a Mogu. He's the warrior this time. And there goes his first ability, Devastating Arc. It's a 180 degree frontal attack, so obviously just get away from it. Next ability he's about to do is called Titanic Strength. It's a periodic enrage buff that does stack, though I didn't see that it really did too much damage to me, so I pretty much just ignored it. Next, he's going to summon Aquilin to assist him. Now, this has very little health and doesn't really do much damage, so you can pretty much just kill it or CC it until it disappears. Alright, again, pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and cut to the end so we can see what this guy drops. Alright, well, let's take a look here. Marsh Song Gloves. The same male gloves we got a while back. That RNG is definitely not our friend. Okay, the Terracotta Fragment. Summons a Terracotta Warrior to fight for you for 10 minutes. One hour cooldown. Ah, very interesting. That could come in very handy, I would assume. Next up, we're going to head up to the Paquin Hollow to see Bonobos. Now, the marker that I have, again, is where I found him, but apparently he has two other locations where he can spawn as well. Alright, as you can see, Bonobos is a Hosen, so we're going to get some nice monkey abilities. First one you're going to see is called Bananarang. I always want to say do 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 But anyway... Boo, doo, doo, doo. Anyway, Banana Rang, you want to avoid. He just throws a banana at you. Just get out of the way. <laughs> the next one is disgusting, of course. Toss Filth. Apparently it increases damage depending on the elite level of the uh, hosen you're attacking at that time. The next ability you're seeing as he jumps around is called Going Bananas. Basically, he's going to just go crazy and jump all over the place. Avoid wherever he's going. Alright, that's all his abilities. Let's skip to the end and see what he drops. Again, getting a little help. Shadow Priest this time. Yeah, I don't know. Must be liking me. Alright, small bag of goods. Magic Banana. Let's check out and see what that is. Toss a magic banana on the ground, which will trip up the first person to walk over it. With a two-hour cooldown. That's vanity, alright. I'm not sure how interesting that'll be, but alright. Gloves of Barrow Spelunking, Leather Gloves Agility, 408 Agility, 611 Stamina, 410 Eye Level, increases haste by 295, increases your mastery by 232. Finally, leather that is different than the others. And on to our eighth and final rare champion in the Valley of the Four Winds, we have Nalak the Ripper, our first Manted. He is just west of the Stoneplow Fields. You can see I have a circle there in a bit of a range because he does fly around in that area, so you will have to hunt him down a little bit. All right, well, once I was able to pull him down with Fairy Fire, I tried to bring him into these NPCs and see if they would help me, but I don't think they actually ended up doing me any good. First ability you're going to see is Blade Fury. He's going to do a frontal cone. Let me tell you, that is nasty. Mantids are very tough to fight because of that. If you do not get out of the way, if you get touched by it at all, you're talking about a fourth of your health, possibly even more. The next ability that makes Mantids a pain in the butt is Tornado. You want to stay away from that thing. It'll do half your health in damage as well, just by being touched by it. 
His third ability that you don't have to worry about too much is called Wind Song. He just buffs himself to do more melee damage. But you can see those other two are absolute nastiness. This is not bad on this level of an, an elite, but wait till you're at like an 89 or a 91 elite mantid. It's just ridiculous. Alright, and with that, let's skip to the end of our final fight. Alright, with a whole lot of kiting and a whole lot of voiding, boom, there we go. Could we find more like that achievement, which is one of each race? Now there's just the one achievement to do every single rare. Alright, small bag of goods and Dynasty of Steel. Let's check that out. Summons a whirlwind of blades to fight for you for 10 minutes. Can only be used outdoors. One hour cooldown. So it's kind of like the trinket we got off the uh, Mogu Warrior. And then the gloves are gloves of congealed mist, which are the same cloth gloves we got off of uh, Salen earlier as well. So more fun with RNG. So there you go. All the rare champions in the Valley of the Four Winds. Just keep in mind, though this was just the Valley of the Four Winds, you're going to encounter those same races in the other zones. So the only other things you're going to have to know are those locations and what they drop. And I might do those in a future episode as well. Now let's go check out some of the loot that we got and see what they can do. First off, let's look at the animation for the Crystal of Insanity. That's the item that increases all stats by 500 for one hour. Apparently that has something to do with insanity. I'm not sure how, but okay. Next up is the Magic Banana. Now this thing has a two-hour cooldown, so I didn't get to use it a lot. And the times I threw it on the ground, some people didn't walk over it. So I th was going to throw it right behind this guy, so when he turned around and ran, and he would hit it. But it instantly hit him instead. But you get the idea. It makes somebody fall down. That's hilarious. Now, unfortunately, being a druid, I'm not able to show you the Overgrown Lily Pad, but it does just give symbiosis, so it just gives you a druid ability. No big deal. Now, here's the Battle Horn. That is the tank item that taunts enemies within 40 yards. Don't worry, I'll be testing these out in the field, so to speak, here in just a moment. Next up is the Whirlwind of Blades. That is the item that will come out and fight for you for 10 minutes. And alongside that, we have the Terracotta Fragment, which summons a Mogu Warrior to fight for you for 10 minutes as well. So you've got both those items out, and you have a little army, though my warrior doesn't seem to really be obeying me very well. Alright, I head to Pandaria because I wanted to try the War Banner out from Salen, but you can only use that outdoors in Pandaria. I also am going to use the Battle Horn here just to see how it works in terms of aggroing. Oh yeah, that's got a nice range and it definitely works. Now while I have it, I use the banner, which causes me to banish, and then you can see the Salen War Scout, he taunts them and runs them off and then he disappears himself. So essentially it's just one way to drop aggro. So two different abilities right there back and forth, one to pull aggro and one to drop aggro. I can definitely see that War Banner coming in handy from time to time. Next up I wanted to try the Terracotta Fragment and uh, have a little fun with the Mogu Warrior. So I decided to come out here to Hellfire and uh, see how he would operate with these mobs in particular. Uh, level 62, normal, no big deal, but I was just curious what kind of a punch this guy would pass. So here I go, I summon him, and... <laughs> yeah, I aggroed a few of them, as you can see. He's pretty much one-shotting these things. Uh, <laughs> chasing them down... <laughs> He does about 6k a swing. Look, he's running off and just destroying stuff. I'm not even hitting or targeting. This guy's a maniac. Now, of course, I aggro and then bam. So, yeah, about 6k between 5-6k a swing. Look at him go. He doesn't even care. He has reckless abandon. He just kills it all. Now, keeping in mind, mobs out in the Valley of the Four Winds only have 150k health, so it's all relative when you come when it comes right down to it, but still, he could come in pretty handy, especially if everyone in a group had him. Next up, while I was here, I decided to try the Seed of Tranquil Growth. It is a little sprout there that does heal you. Now, I was trying to take some damage from one of these to be able to have it heal me, and you can see it threw a quick heal on me, but... It really didn't do it too often. It kind of sat there unless I was really low, so I had to take drastic measures. Nothing out here was going to hit me very hard, so fall damage, and there it goes. It does heal for about 30k every time it does heal. It's just, it's slow about doing it, so I guess that could come in handy questing or something like that. There it goes again, and bam. Next up, I decided to take the Dynasty of Steel for a spin. Sorry about the pun, I know I had to do it. You can see it's pretty much hitting the same at about 5 to 6k each time. It doesn't seem to be quite 
as assertive as the warrior, I would say, would probably be the phrase. It, it does get to the target eventually, but it, it seems to take its time. It doesn't have a charge like the warrior or anything, so... I tried to take it up against a Fell Reaver, and it did hit the Fell Reaver for the 5.6k, and it just sat there. It would go... Every once in a while when I moved, it would hit again, but otherwise it just kind of chilled, and... I was thinking it'd be much more fun to see what the warrior would do to a Fell Reaver, so let's check that out. Alright, here we go. My warrior against a Fell Reaver with no assistance from me. You can see, look at the health bar. Dropping 5 to 6k a shot. He is just... He's not hesitating at all. He is just rocking this Fell Reaver. This would have been unbelievable back in the day. We would have thought somebody was hacking or something. This is hilarious. So, 104k health on this Fell Reaver, of course. And that is nothing to this warrior because mobs, regular mobs in Valley of Four Winds have 50k more health. But he's not done! <laughs> There's another mob over there. He just... He's a crazy man. Alright guys, that is an extensive look at how Blizzard is handling the rares in Mist of Pandaria. I hope it was interesting, fun, and definitely informative, even down the road when this is live. Without any major changes, this still could be a very handy guide for you. Anyway guys, like, comment, and subscribe, and as always, take care of yourselves.